Hello, everyone. My name is Oleg Kogan. I will be your Physics 211 instructor for modern physics. So how we're going to run this is I will upload a series of videos. Each lecture will be broken up into small bite-sized pieces, 15, 20 minutes each. And I will also share the screen uh, with the writing, the writing tablet, and uh, hopefully that will be enough. If for some reason you cannot access it, email me and we'll think of something else. And uh, there's also a textbook, okay? It's a particularly excellent textbook. We don't say that often about textbooks, but this textbook is a really good textbook. Uh, so unless you have significant difficulties obtaining the textbook, uh, you are expected to have it. But if you do have difficulties, let me know. Okay, well, so let's begin. So this is modern physics, uh, which includes foundations of special relativity and quantum mechanics. I understand that most of you are here for quantum mechanics, because a lot of you are electrical engineers and you need quantum mechanics with some foundations of it. Well, you might not use special relativity, but you still need it to be an educated person working in high tech. So the first three weeks uh, that we'll spend on special relativity, uh, take it with a positive attitude. Okay, it will enrich you. It will give you a perspective on things that are different from what you're used to. Okay. So first things first, we will need to define a few terms, okay? So I will now define four terms and it will be easier to communicate with these definitions out of the way, okay? I will do this informally in my own words, not out of some encyclopedia Britannica or anything like that. So here we go. So the first term is something called a reference frame. And while I'm writing, now, what is a reference frame? How do you understand it? So a reference frame is really just a coordinate system. A reference frame of an object is simply a coordinate system attached to that object. So here I am sitting here, and here is my reference frame. It's attached to me, okay? X, Y coordinates or X, Y, Z. There's another person passing by on the street. That person has their own coordinate system attached to them, and that's their reference frame. Okay, so this is, here's uh, ground, for example. So here's the reference frame of the ground, x, y. For some reason, they always call the frames by letter S. Frame S and frame S prime. Okay, and so here's a person walking with some velocity v and they have their own reference frame with coordinates x prime and y prime this is called frame s prime okay so we have frame s attached to the ground and frame s prime attached to some other person So that's the concept of reference frame and it's not particularly highbrow. It's, it's what you think it is, okay? The next term is a little bit more advanced. It's called inertial reference frame, okay? So what is an inertial reference frame? Now different texts will define it differently depending on the level at our level, I will say this, a frame is an inertial reference frame in which an object that's left alone with no force acting on it, that is, remains at rest or continues to move uniformly if it was already moving uniformly. <clears throat> in other words, re inertial reference frame is one in which Newton's first law works, okay? So one, in which new 
Сейчас. Newton's first law says that objects that are left alone uh, continue to be in a state of rest or continue to move uniformly if they were in a state of rest or were moving uniformly, respectively. So let me give you an example. Let's say you're an inner airplane. You picked an aisle seat, okay? And the aisle, for some reason, happens to be covered with ice. It's a frictionless aisle. Okay, I really don't think there has ever been an airplane like that. But let's say, okay, it's a new airline uh, with frictionless aisles. Okay? You take a bowling ball, for some reason you have a bowling ball with you, and you place the bowling ball right next to you. Okay, so there's a bowling ball sitting on the floor right next to you. And because the aisle is frictionless, there is no mechanism to provide the force in the horizontal direction, okay? Friction isn't there. Friction is that force that would uh, give a horizontal force, but there is no friction. And there is no net force in the vertical direction either because force of gravity is canceled by the normal force. So the ball stays right where you put it. So this is an inertial reference frame, okay? An object on which there is no force acting uh, stays at rest if it was already at rest. Now imagine the same situation, but the airplane is now accelerating on the runway. You take your bowling ball, you put the bowling ball next to you, the plane is accelerating. Where does the ball go? Where does the ball go? You all know that the ball will go back towards the back of the plane. Now, Let's ask ourselves, ourselves a question. Is there any net force acting on the ball? No. There is no horizontal force. There's nothing to provide that horizontal force. Forces are pushes and pulls. There is no, nothing to push or pull the ball in the horizontal direction. Uh, is, the ball, is there any net force in the vertical direction? No. Gravity is still canceled by the normal force. The plane is still horizontal. But the ball is accelerating. Okay, so that means that now you are observing the ball from a non-inertial reference frame. The reference frame that's attached to your body or your body's reference frame, also the reference frame of the airplane, is a non-inertial reference frame. Now you might, uh, I can hear you uh, say to yourself, well, why is he making it so complicated? Can't he just say that any frame that's not accelerating is inertial. Not exactly. Okay. All non-accelerating non frames are inertial, but not all inertial frames are non-accelerating. Okay. I'm only saying this uh, as a side note. You will not have to worry about the subtleties. And you also don't have to worry about things like, ooh, uh, this topic makes me nervous because he might give me a scenario on an exam and ask me, is this frame inertial or not? First of all, I'm not going to do that. I'm only getting these definitions under our belt so that we can continue discussing things more smoothly. Okay? I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to uh, uh, you know, breathe down your neck with a strong face. It's not, I'm not trying to trick you. Uh, so what I said about inertial reference frames is exactly what I wanted to say. And I don't want to go into more subtle things unless we need to. The third concept is called invariance. This is a very important concept. So invariance, inertial reference frame, and the reference frame. So the invariance. We say that something is invariant if it stays the same from one reference frame to another, okay? Say someone throws a penny off of the building and it takes two seconds for it to reach the ground, okay? Does the answer depend on the orientation of the coordinate system of the observer's frame? No. 
Does the answer depend on whether the observation was made in the frame of the ground or in the frame of a balloon that's moving at some constant speed? Well, in classical physics, the answer is no, okay? From the point of view of like physics 141, or from the point of view of Newtonian mechanics, the answer is no. Then you would say that at least as far as Newtonian mechanics suggests, the time to fall to the ground is invariant, is an invariant quantity with respect to a change of a reference frame. Okay, that's a mature way to uh, make the full statement. Another example would be, say, the mass of the penny that falls. Regardless of which frame you are observing it from, the mass is the same. Okay. One important point. Uh, well, first of all, let me put yeah, invariance. Okay, so this is uh, sameness. from one reference frame to another, okay? One important point to make is that not only can you have invariant quantities, like the time to fall to the ground or the mass, but you can also have invariant laws, okay? A law of physics is a statement about a relationship between quantities, F equals MA. It relates force and acceleration. V equals IR, it relates uh, potential and resistance, okay? F equals KS, it relates, relates force and displacement. Laws of physics are relationships, okay? <clears throat> so it's meaningful to talk of invariant relationships not quantities, but relationships, invariant laws. What that means, we will see that. I'm just giving you sort of an advanced notice so that when it comes to that, so that you will already be attuned to the difference between invariant quantities and invariant laws or invariant relationships. Just a word of warning, invariance should not be confused with conservation. Invariance refers to something not changing from one frame to another. Whereas conservation refers, something, refers to something not changing from one moment of time to another. Okay, so uh, not to be confused with conservation. Sameness from T1 to T2. Okay? For example, energy is conserved, but it's actually not invariant. So let's say kinetic energy. Let's say you have two objects colliding and recoiling like two carts on, an, on the frictionless tracks. They collide and they recoil. The total energy, or in this case, it's just kinetic energy, the total kinetic energy of the combined system before the collision and after collision, T1 and T2, has not changed. It has been conserved, it's conserved. But the value of the energy, say 25 joules, depends on which reference frame you're observing the collision from. Why is that? I would like you to think about it. Again, this is something that we'll come back to, um, but for now, I just want you to think about it, okay? Why is it that kinetic energy is not invariant? This will get you to understand the concept of invariance better. And the final term that we have to get, out, get under our belts is something called an event. 
Okay. Event. That's term number four. And that's simply something with a specific location, say x, y, z coordinates. And I. Um, I always like to give an example of a firecracker exploding. It goes off at some specific location out here in space at some specific time. It's an event. Okay. Um, in everyday language, we think of things like a football game as an event. In physics lingo, it's not an event because that's actually a whole continuing series of events from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. But the start of a football game is an event, okay? The time when the referee blew the whistle, that's an event, okay? The ball passing through the gates, uh, through the, uh, past the goalpost, that's an event. Okay? It has a location and time. We will be concerned, um, particularly concerned with pairs of events. So here's a pair of events that's separated only by space, but not by time. Boom. Here is a pair of events that's separated by time, but not by space, only by time, not by space. Event one, event two. And in general, you can have a pair of events that's separated both by space and time. Event one, event two. They're separated by space and by some time interval both spatial interval and temporal interval. Again, we will uh, grow more material around these ideas. Uh, I just wanted to give you an example for each one of those terms. Okay, so that will be uh, the end of the first video.